In this video, I will show you how to go from this to this in less than 9 minutes. Let's dive right into it. If you want to follow along this video, I put the Figma link in the description. I create two examples, one we're going to use in this video and the other one is a GIF so you can practice on your own. So first we need to prepare our designs and for that there are two main steps. First is to get rid of all the auto layouts we have because later we're going to start moving things around and the auto layout will not let us do that. So this design is kind of already prepared for that because this is a frame, this is a group. The only auto layout I have is the tab bar. So I will get rid of this. The second step is to select the items or the frames that we want to add depth. I want to add depth to the main home frame and these three cards. And we need to add a rectangle background to those items. So let's say for this, for this home frame, I need to add a rectangle and this rectangle needs to have the same dimensions. This one is 390 and 844. So this one should be 390 and I believe I use 32 as my border radius then I will put my this background behind my home I'll move this here I can press space to make sure it doesn't get into my my frame and then I will select these two and frame selection now for the cars this is easier because these ones already have a rectangle as a background I just can duplicate this and then I will change the name to BG. This is the one we're gonna use for death. Now I'll do the same for these other two cards. I will duplicate, change the name, same here, duplicate and change the name. Once you believe you have all your items ready, I highly recommend you to make a copy. I'll change the name first, call it ready. I recommend you to make a copy so that once you start using the plugin and messing around with your design and you realize you missed something, you can just come back and edit this design that is ready and you don't need to start from scratch. So highly recommend to make a copy. Now with this copy, we're going to work here and we're going to start using the plugin. So there are two main plugins that you can use to skew your designs and those are skew data and isometric. The reason I really like skew data is because you have the freedom to choose the angles that you want. On the other hand, for with isometric, you're kind of restricted to the default angles. So you have these four options and that's it. Yeah, so we're going to use skew data. I will run the plugin and I will use 25 here and minus six. Before moving things around, I would like to make sure to uncheck this, otherwise I will not be able to see the content outside. And I see that my border radius here is kind of mess. So I will put this back to 32. That's it. And now we can start moving things around to have the 3D effect. So I'll start with a nav bar. I will just like to move this on top, something like that. This here. I would like this to go farther, have this effect that goes outside of the frame. And for this one, something like that. Of course, this highly depends on your designs and your preference. So there's no strict rule of how this should look. If you're liking this video so far, I will really appreciate it if you hit that like button below. It will take you one second and it will really, really help my channel. So once we have this 3D effect, we can start adding depth and we're going to start with our main frame and we're going to use the background that we create during the preparation. And as an extra tip, I will show you how to use or how to create shadows. So I'll duplicate this and I'll call this shadow. I will select the two of them and I will start moving them down. So we have this depth effect, maybe something like this. I'll select the shadow and I'll just make it black for now. Now we'll move it down a little bit so it's not confusing. So now we're going to fix these round corners because it doesn't feel very, very smooth here. So for that, we're going to select the rectangle, go and flatten this component. And once we have it flattened, we can double click and start messing around with these anchor points. Something like this. We're going to do the same thing here. 
It doesn't need to be perfect, but yeah, I think it looks very nice that way. Now we can select the shadow and we are going to play around with the opacity and we're going to add a, a layer blur. Layer blur, maybe something like 40 and then opacity, maybe 42. And then I'll use again the, the skew that plugging to add a more realistic effect. So I'll run the skew that here. Yeah, maybe something like this. And then, of course, it doesn't look very realistic. So instead of fill, we're going to use linear and I'll switch this to. And now we have a more realistic shadow, maybe like that. I think that looks good. So we're going to do the same for this one now. Same steps. I will duplicate, make this a shadow, then select these two, move it down to have the death effect. I will change the color of this one so it's easier to distinguish. Then I'll select the shadow and I'll move it down. I'll change the color to black for now. Then go back to my background layer. Again, to fix the corners, we're gonna flatten this rectangle, double click, play around with these anchor points. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to improve the round corners effect. Now we go to our shadow again, same process, decrease the opacity, maybe 50 this time, layer blur, maybe 35. Maybe I can make this a little bit stronger, like 60. Now the same process for this one, Since we have the shadow kind of on top of this component, maybe we want to move this component on top. Yeah, I think that looks better. And the same process, we select the background, duplicate, call this shadow. Nice. And now we can also add a shadow to this element. We can just duplicate this one. This is easier. We don't need to have a rectangle for that. You can just change the color of this one, add the layer blur, and then play around with the opacity, maybe like that. So now we're going to start playing around with the colors of our, of our background. This is entirely a preference thing. Even, we can even leave it like this. We can use a, another solid color. I will show you how to use a linear background. You have like a reflection effect but again this is merely a preference type of thing we're gonna start with the main frame or our main background i'll change this to linear i'll move this here i would like the the bottom part of my of my background to be a little bit stronger so i'm gonna move this here and this one i will make it solid but i would like to be a little bit lighter maybe like like that to add like a reflection in the corner i will create a new color here i will make it a little bit lighter and then right next to it i will create a new color that is dark again maybe a little bit lighter so as you can see we have this reflection effect and again i will make this a little bit darker i think that looks okay and now i will do the same for the other elements Now let's see how it looks as a prototype. Hey, I'm really happy with these results and I hope you like it too. That's all I have for you in this video, but if you want to learn more about Figma, Adobe XD and everything related to product design, follow me and see you on my next video. Bye bye.